Hello everyone, Carlos here. So in today's video, we're going to be talking about clipboard change event. This is when the content of a clipboard gets modified by a process. It's actually going to save only text information and it's going to archive that text information into the archive folder that we have configured for Sysmon. So this is very important. There's going to be a copy saved to disk. Now, this is one of those that you need to be very careful. For example, let's say that you have a Hyper-V server and you have VMs in that Hyper-V server and you have opened a console window to it. And then you decide to use your password manager or whatever other method and you copy a password into your clipboard. You probably pasted that into the field, you got access somewhere else, and then you change focus to that Hyper-V window. That password is going to be sent and captured on the host and it's going to be archived on the machine. And all of this is going to be with event ID number 24. So we really need to be very careful with this event and have a very specific use case in which we feel that it is going to provide value to us. Its original intended purpose is for, to capture RDP clip text that an attacker may go in and copy scripts into to then execute in a machine, probably PowerShell. Uh, it could be used for other scenarios where we want to track what a user is actually doing on that machine. If we know that that machine has been compromised or somebody's accessing that machine, we may get additional information over there if they're using the clipboard, but that is a very, very specific use case. So let's take a look at the event fields for this event. So here I have the capture that you guys saw in the video. I'm right now going to look at that event that we captured where that password was exposed. As you can see, we have the image of the process that actually set that instance of the clipboard. We have the session number of that user. We have if it has been archived or not. We're able to do it under what context of what user and what is the hash? Now, this hash is going to be the name of the file. Now, you may ask, hey, Carlos, who has access to this information? Since we're saving all of this into an archive folder, and in the case of the configuration, as you saw, I didn't specify one, it's automatically going to use the sysmon folder to save that data, and it's going to add, a, at the beginning of the file name, clip dash and then the hash number. So let's take a look at the content where that secret password was actually archived. So let's go over to it. So right now in the machine, what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be starting a CMD session as system and I'm going to be using PSXSEC for this. PSXSEC, cmd.exe. Now we're going to navigate into the sysmon folder. So I'm going to go CD, C, sysmon. I'm going to do a dir. As you can see, we have clip dash and then the hash that we saw in the earlier window where we have 49F1 for the clipboard. And if I do a type on this file itself, we can see the super secret password was actually stored there. So as you saw, kind of useful, depending on the scenario that you want to cover in your specific environment and what specific host. This is something that I would not recommend to deploy to client machines, maybe some servers, jump servers, maybe. Uh, but to be honest, I haven't found in any of my customers uh, or in my own experience, a use case where I have gone like, yes, this is needed. I'm going to deploy it to my environment. As always, I hope that you found this information useful. I'll see you guys in the next video.